Hi everybody, this is Gary Fond, and it is a real pleasure to be here speaking on behalf of Sony, the largest consumer electronics company in the world. And um, I don't have a formal relationship with Sony, unlike the other uh, photographers that are here speaking on behalf of them. I'm actually just kind of a person who uses them. But as you might know, I am a consumer uh, accessories manufacturer. I'm the person who makes the light sphere and a lot of the other products. But I was a professional wedding photographer for 20 years and I shot over a thousand weddings during that time. I started to realize that we are getting some really blown out pictures and that was because of the flash. So I invented the light sphere. The light sphere was inspired by the lampshade and it's basically being seen all over the world and even on NASA missions. But as a products manufacturer, one of the things that I do, especially as a photographer, is I test all the equipment. And I'm a very active photographer. So I have big systems of Canon and Nikon and Olympus and Pentax and Sony and I have all the different lenses and, uh, for Nikon. And for my own photography uses, I choose Sony. And the reason I do, and I'm going to show you today the reasons why it actually makes you a much better photographer. I think you'll be convinced also. Inside a Sony viewfinder, and you guys can look at them on the booth over there, electronic viewfinder, it's called OLED. And it's very, very fast. In fact, you'd be really surprised when you look at it, you think it's, it's optical until you switch it to black and white. Or until you go into manual and you change the exposure up or down and you can actually, what I call pre-chimp in the eyepiece, make it brighter or darker if you want, and then see the photo before you actually even shoot. This is neat because rather than most cameras where you take the picture and then you look, you can actually with a Sony look, adjust, and then take the picture and that's a lot of fun. Robert Evans is probably the most celebrated wedding photographer for celebrities. He shot Tom Cruise's wedding and Brad Pitt's wedding and um, just a phenomenal photographer. He was shooting Canon and I said, you know, I know you love that and all that, but why don't you just take my little A77 for a spin? Next thing I knew, he sold all of his Canon equipment, he now shoots Sony, and he says the following phrase, Sony makes you a better photographer. So let me show you why we are all excited about this. This focus tracking, so let's switch over to my camera so I can show you guys how this works. Okay, so. What you're seeing right here is through my camera. We have a, my model Tisha out in the audience and it's basically finding faces. You see the three boxes around the faces? And there's actually, how many faces? One, two, three, four, five. You see the boxes? So it's, what it's doing is it understands that those are faces and it's going to make decisions based on that. Watch this. When I click the center button, it says track, pick one to choose. I'm gonna pick her. Okay, so now there's a double square on her and squares on all the other faces. So the camera's thinking, you know what? Gary wants only her. Look at that. So it's following her, two squares on her. Now watch what happens when I leave the scene. I'll go actually go off. When I come back in, oh, that's her. And that's really something. When you're shooting a wedding or whatever, you just go, oh, well, I'm in a cocktail hour, I'm gonna pick the bride. And you've got all these people and you've got a 200 millimeter lens completely racked out and you're sitting there and you're firing and you go wham, 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 wham and it's choosing that one person. So can you kind of move around one side to the other? Okay, so there she goes and it's following her. I've got this on just like that, see? So I can go, sorry about this. <laughs> like that and in. Actually, I'm on manual. See what I'm talking about on manual here? So inside the eyepiece, this is exactly what I'm seeing. I can go, oh, I want the, this is too bright. I'm going to go darker like that. Or let's just bring it up and I want it right there. So, and then it'll pick just her and then it'll fire. And this is something that I can't do with a Canon or an Icon. It's called AI servo focus mode. On a Canon or an Icon, which typically happens is it'll pick the thing that's in front. So if you're a wedding photographer and you have a bride and she's holding a bouquet and you pick the AI servo, you're going to find that your bouquet's in focus or anything that's in front. And what happens is, is without face recognition, you really can't choose the faces. It just doesn't know. But on this one, it's kind of like the Terminator. It's finding faces, but it's prioritizing on her. Now watch this. I want to shoot in black and white mode. Okay, so I'll hit the black and white, uh, the function button, and I'll go down here to creative style, and I'll go black and white. 
and now I can shoot black and white and I can fire like that or if I want to go and make it kind of really high kind of like that I can bring it up or take it down and or let's just say for example that I want more depth of field than that let's take this up to f2.8 take the shutter speed down and I'll have uh, less compression so this is really fun this is something that's not possible with other cameras other cameras will not track a face other cameras will not track a moving object when I'm photographing my children I have two and a half year olds they move in they move out and they move all around and on my a77 I like to shoot that thing at the 12 frame per second mode and it's incredible how fast it captures and it actually nails the uh, nails the focus on the new a7r it does even better than that. You can choose the face, but it will find the eyeball and shoot the eyeball. So that's the newest technology of that type of a focus. Let's go to function again, and uh, we'll go creative style, and we'll go to, so that's sunset, landscape. Let's go to portrait. This is one that's really cool. Now this is something that I've been doing quite a bit. Tisha, can you come up here to our old spot? I've been shooting video for pretty much full time the last year. I've been very, very into video. And what I like about video is, I don't know how many of you came to my seminar last night, but we've been doing our family portraiture on video. And as a videographer, one thing that was really tough for me was the lighting. I had one of those LED lights, and it was very, very harsh and very bright. I just didn't like how it looked. So I asked myself, how can I get better lighting than that LED lighting and be able to have predictable quality? And so what I did was I basically created this new system, which is the continuous light system, which I've always wanted. But now I'm sticking a light bulb inside a Gary Fong light sphere. The Gary Fong light sphere is the softest light that I have ever found. Uh, because it basically is an omnidirectional source of light and sends light completely around all over the place. But what you're seeing in here is a 11 watt Philips light bulb that I bought at Home Depot. It's just 11 watts, it's no big deal, it costs about $14 and this now has been the light source for most of my portraiture and all of my videos. So that's kind of fun and actually also what's fun is now I've got these color LED bulbs that they sell on eBay. This was about 20 bucks. And they're kind of fun because you can, it's got a remote control and you can put whatever color on it. I really like having color effects, like I might have a color wall or do a color hair light. Okay, this would be vertical, but I've got a television set here, okay? So, but you see how I've got a really dramatic red background behind her, and you see how it's following her face around, which is fun. You know what I would have to do with a Canon or an Nikon? I would either have to joystick on her eyeball, or I would have to do what I call focus and recrop, which means I'd have to go like this. I'd have to lock down the eyeball on one of the focus points, and then I'd have to, because it's right smack in the center, and then I'd have to recompose. With this one, it's going to do that for me. It's going to basically follow around, okay? So this is my shot. There. Okay, so that's that. And what I like about this lighting is, if you can see, as she's looking right at me, look at the catch light on the eyes and the predictability of this. The thing that's really interesting about this system, and I'm a manual shooter, I really like to shoot manual, I really like to crowd the camera and be on top of it, is that I found after time that it makes the same decisions that I would. Like if I'm shooting in portraiture or a, half, a fast moving situation, it will actually pick the bigger shutter speeds and the more wide open apertures. Uh, it will, in a flash situation, it will sense how much ambient light is around and it will slow down the shutter speed until it actually picks up a nice mix between the flash and the ambient. If you put it on auto ISO, it'll move the ISO within the workable ranges. So watch what happens now. I'll just walk over here and do blue. And so now we got blue. And that's what's fun. If I want to go green, I'll go green. And I'll just go like that. So this right here behind her is a Westcott 42 inch on a clamp. It's cool because it just kind of folds down into a little thing and you can put it into a bag and then the stand. But what I like about this system that you're seeing right here is how inexpensive everything is. Right, this light bulb right here and my adapter unit, okay, so this is a Gary Fong Generation 5 light sphere. This adapter unit's only $50. The light bulb is only about $12. And then I've got that Westcott behind, I don't know how much that is, but um, 
I can basically do whatever I want with, uh, with this type of portraiture. Change the background color and do any kind of special effects. If I want to change the, um, the intensity of this color, I can just basically see in my eyepiece and again, this is something that you have to experience by actually playing with a Sony camera. Look through it and shoot. And you'd be pretty amazed at what it can do. Oh, that's not right there. Okay, let's go back again to red. And now I have red. Uh, so as a portrait photographer, that's what you have. It's beautiful. Move to your uh, right just a tiny bit. There, right there, good. See that thing follow her around? And that's on a vivid setting. And then I can go in here in the function and change the, the style settings. Now watch this. I can change the exposure if I want. If I want it kind of hot, ooh, let's try something. I'm gonna put it in black and white. Okay, so we'll go down here and just imagine this is your eyeball inside the viewfinder. So you're not actually looking at a TV screen, you're looking inside the viewfinder in your eyeball and just picture for yourself that this looks just like I'm shooting in an optical viewfinder. Black and white photography is completely different than color photography and those of us who shoot black and white instinctively know where the shades of gray are. We know that a certain maybe middle green looks like gray or a middle red looks like gray and then a dark red looks like black so when we're composing we wind up actually shifting things around because we have an expert eye at shooting black and white but if you're not a black and white photographer and you don't really know how it works then all you basically need to do is put this on black and white mode and you've got beautiful quality again this is 23 megapixels and if I wanted to shoot a movie all I do is press the movie button right there and look at this now I'm recording in video, in black and white, just like that. And go like that, and now it's recorded a movie file. It's my overexposure, underexposure, whatever I want to do. It's just like that. You can see this in your own eyepiece uh, and adjust accordingly. This is a full frame camera, half the cost of the Nikon or Canon contemporaries. If you buy the APS sensor equivalent uh, uh, that has many of the features that I saw here, we're talking under $800. Now for this type of quality lighting, I'm talking about one Home Depot light bulb inside my new adapter kit, which is $50, and then an LED bulb on a Westcott reflector. Now you don't even need to really put it on any type of a reflector. I can make this a, a cool hair light. Let's bring this around like that. And then I'll just kind of, I'll just make this kind of give you a real hot center. And I'll put myself right in the middle of it. And so now we've got red smack in the middle. And let's move that way just a tiny bit. Whoa, 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 back, back, back. Yep. A little bit more to your, yep, right there. Good. Okay, so watch this. That's kind of cool. Now I have this type of uh, look where we have kind of the hair lit up a little bit. And let's just put blue on there to cool it. So the same effect. Makes me very efficient when I'm shooting. Oh, that's cool. Boom. Let's hit play. And so now we have something like that. So there's a lot of experimenting you can do. But again, this is about $100 worth of lighting. And if you shoot an A77, it's an $800 camera, plus whatever lenses that you have. For those of you who are concerned about you know, lens quality and going, oh, wow, you know, well, I really like my Canon series of lenses or my Nikon series of lenses, Sony is compatible with Zeiss, the T-Stars. And there's no better optical company than Zeiss. So now you can have uh, whatever money you would have spent on other lenses. The Zeisses are not cheap, but they're the best. And uh, very fast frame rate, very fast autofocus, low cost, high megapixel count, full frame, uh, and a fraction of the cost. I think it's really hard to beat.